All right, something a little bit uh, unconventional for this time of year, or not, depending on how you look at things. I've got these two John Deere riding lawnmowers, LA140 and an L120. I ran them all last year without changing the oil. I have the filters on hot standby, I just haven't done it. Guys, my New Year's resolution this year is gonna be to just try to get ahead of my preventative maintenance just a little bit. So we're gonna drag these two lawnmowers up here. We're gonna bang out a very quick oil change and then take the batteries out of those units for the winter time. So if that's what you're here for, stick around, let's do it. So this is where they live in the winter time and I've already put them down here but the batteries are still in them. So uh, I, I do have the keys, it's minus eight, uh, minus eight degrees Celsius. I'm not gonna try to uh, get these things started here because that's just, uh, that's just hard on them. I mean, these are John Deere. They don't even cut grass good. We have to be careful. So uh, yeah, we'll pull them out of here with a strap. They love when I rag on John Deere. Now let's see if they start. Now we watch the snow, I'll go flying off. <laughs> you gonna be ready on the on the orange? Come back on the speed if it catches. <laughs> oh, you gotta put the brake on. Interlock. sometimes have difficulty starting in the summertime. We've uh, we've tried to make some adjustments on the valves and that kind of thing, but I'm pretty sure this one's just getting tired. Maybe. When in doubt, 
dump gasoline directly into it. What could go wrong? Anybody can do a snowblower video in the winter time. Can you do a lawnmower video? Oh, dad's mowing the snow. With the snow mower. Do I dare turn on the mower deck? Last time I did this, somebody had the genius idea of uh, getting a piece of tin foil and slipping the tin foil kind of under the oil filter so that uh, when you're draining it, you don't end up with all that slop all over the frame of the tractor. So maybe we'll do that. We got some pie plates. Let's try that. So this is our drain plug here on this uh, on this John Deere L120 lawn tractor. It's just a plastic cap. It's like, give it a quarter turn and pull it out. And, uh, and that's all there is. There's an O-ring in there that makes the seal to stop the oil from leaking out. It's a little bit Mickey Mouse in my opinion, but uh, you know, it seems to hold the oil in there between oil changes. So who am I to argue? So yeah, <coughs> that's the position for normal operating. And then you just give it a little turn like that. That's it. And then you pull it straight out and that's it. <sighs> I'd say that oil was ready to be changed. What do you think? You didn't change it last year. Don't tell the people that. I already told them. You don't need to. It's what are you going to do? Run no matter what. They're, oh, yeah. So, Dad's a big, big fan of these lawn tractors. But, uh, you know, you guys know I like my orange equipment. Uh, so, we'll just let that drain and we'll head over to the other side and uh, get the filter off with the pie plate. No, so nothing's gonna, this is, whatever's oh, this in it. Shoulder. Yeah, I'm just trying to catch the crap that comes out. Good thing I bought that big box of rubber gloves the other day. <laughs> right? I want to take up space on the, on the uh, Well, yeah, I mean. On the bench? Yeah. 
Why, uh, why would I put rubber gloves on before? <clears throat> Stupid. Worse. You should just grab that other and I'll throw it in a big oil pan. Well, if I could reach the big oil. Oh, I can reach the big oil pan. Found it. We can just rinse these and reuse them, right? Look at that. It even just hangs there. Uh-huh. No hands. Get your PPE on, people. Safety goggles, knee pads, rubber gloves, face mask. Just kidding. Still a little bit dripping out of there, but you know, it almost fills that coffee can. I don't even know how much these things hold. This thing looks like it's leaking a bit of oil, Dad. It's pretty near undercoated. This is when somebody uh, chimes in on the comments section and says, you need to take better care of your equipment. You should be ashamed of yourself. Look it. We are, that's why we are John Deere. <laughs> we are ashamed of ourselves, that's why we have John Deere's. Um, both of these tractors came to us used and uh, we've just kind of nursing them along. Uh, they do the trick, that's all that matters. It's not pretty, but it gets the job done. Let's try not to totally spill this all over the place. Oh, it's so nice and warm. I just want to dip my fingers in it. Leave that out. Oh, yeah. Now I can hopefully see if I can tilt that down a little bit. Tip this pie plate in here and transfer whatever's in the pie plate into the Folgers can. You know what? Tin foil worked pretty good. That was a great recommendation, whoever that was two years ago. Thank you. Pull that out. Let the trouble light fall down into the oil and cause a fire. And we'll be off to the races here. Now make sure to clean your mating surface. Oh, there is black paint under there. So it looks like our oil filters are the John Deere Alpha Mike 125424 model. You can probably get these on uh, Amazon or something, but I don't remember where I got these. Did we get John these on it? Did I get them on? You got them at actual John, John Deere? Deere yeah. We got them at the actual John Deere dealership because we like to support local. Well, we had to get bearings for your. That's right. We were also picking up other parts. Do we want to put a little splash of oil into this filter before we, uh, come on. Let's talk about this for a minute. So this oil filter goes on the side of the tractor like this. So you can't really fill it up with oil because when you turn it sideways to screw it onto the engine, you're going to lose probably two thirds of the oil out of that anyway. And honestly, I don't know about you, but how many pieces of equipment or cars or trucks or vans have you towed to the scrapyard and the engine was seized in them because you didn't fill the oil filter up. Normally by the time we get rid of equipment, it's because uh, the bodies are rotted off of them and that sort of thing. So I'm not too concerned about this. I do understand why people do it. And if it was a, a circumstance where you were screwing the oil filter on like this and all the oil would actually stay in the filter, I would do it every time. I'm not doing it here, guys. So don't get mad at me in the comments. I'm not doing it. Unless you uh, want to pick this thing up with the excavator and hang it on its side. Sure, no problem. Maybe we'll do that next time. So I did just pour a little bit on here just so that I can uh, get some oil on that gasket. You just want to uh, reduce the coefficient of friction between that, uh, between that gasket and the mating surface on the side of the block. You, you want to know that the friction you're feeling spinning this on is, is a result of the filter coming up tight against the block and not just the drag of the rubber on the, on the mating surface there, if that makes any sense. I like that just fine. Oh, so I did put the, I did put the cover back on, not the cover. I put the drain plug back on. Did you turn it the right way? I did turn it the right way. This is clean oil, right? I'm putting in, not dirty oil. 
I'm sure this machine is very happy to have this right now. So there's obviously other things to do on this too. Air filter, fuel filter, lots of greasing points on the deck and all that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, I'm not too worried about that stuff right now. This always seems to be the step that gets missed. And uh, I'm happy to just have this done so that I can put these machines to bed. This machine's only moderately cleaner than yours. It's not too much cleaner, but... All right, let's see what comes out of this one. See how smart I was? I moved that first mm -hmm. this time. It's probably not in it. Well, I can take this off and it'll drain quicker. There we go. See how much quicker the oil comes out of there when you pull the dipstick? Dipstick. Okay, we'll let that drain and go cram this pie plate in the other side. It does feel like there's a, it's a little tighter on this one. Finger tight. I got it with my hand. I don't even need the wrench. Maybe. That pie plate was genius. Love YouTube. So same thing on this one. Just enough oil to get that gasket wet. That's tight enough and if it needs to be tighter, if it needs to be any tighter, I can tighten it after the fact. We'll look for leaks when we start them. Yeah. Alrighty, we're not going to be much longer, I don't imagine. Yeah. Well, it's it's got almost the same amount of oil in it uh, as the other one, which is good. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll uh, put that cap back on. A little twist to get that locking tab in place. Dump this oil. Fill her up. What's that, 550? Yep. <laughs> What do you think? I can't imagine blowing snow with no. one of these things. They lose traction so I easily. Like well, yeah. You, you would definitely, definitely need chains, but in my mind, that would be so hard on the hydrostatic. Yeah, it's right on the full line. All right, so we got the oil changed on both of these machines. I've got a 10 mil wrench for this one, and I've got a 7 16 wrench for this one. Uh, I, why the difference, I don't know. We probably changed the hardware over uh, on the battery clamps at some point. So we'll take these uh, out with us when we go to park these machines outside. We can get the batteries out and we'll be done. So the next step is uh, start these things up and uh, do a final check on the oil level, I guess. So let's get the heater put away and we'll open up the door and fire these things up. And nobody died of carbon monoxide poisoning. It's a miracle.
didn't believe me. Now I have video proof. Want to drive that one for me? We'll just do the same thing. Very dark. All right, do yours first. <clears throat> One, two. Put my glove back on and talk in the garage. All right, so that's it for this video. A little bit of fun, a little bit of chaos. It's not always great, big, perfectly organized shops with amazing lighting and that sort of thing. Sometimes it's, uh, drag your junk into the garage and just get the job done. So hope you enjoyed that. We'll see you in the next one.